Hello. Can anybody online hear me? Sound check? Okay, great. All right, remember to everyone online, put any questions you have in the chat and we will get to them at the end. Um, with that, I will turn it over. Hello, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today for our package demo uh, workshop. Uh, so I'm Xinge Wang uh, from Professor Riemann's lab at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, and today uh, I'm going to co-host this uh, workshop together with Shang Gao, who is standing beside me wearing the same t-shirt. Um, and the title for today's workshop will be Analyzing Cellular Heterogeneity Across Time and Across Biomedical Conditions or Interventions. So here's the line of today's workshop. So uh, we're gonna introduce uh, two R packages. So the first part, uh, Sean is gonna introduce the BayFam. Uh, so BayFam is a Bayesian inference model that integrates the ChIP-seq transcription factor information into the single cell RNC data. Uh, and since BayFam is gonna take um, some, some like long time to run, so Sean is gonna introduce the major functions and the workflows of BayFam using the slides. And the second part, uh, I'm gonna demonstrate the uh, trend catcher R package, which was designed to analyze the time course RNA sequencing data. So included both the bulk RNA seq and the single cell RNA seq data. And uh, uh, we hopefully, uh, together with these uh, two uh, kits, uh, it's gonna help you to demonstrate some uh, fundamental biological questions regarding the cell uh, heterogeneity across medical conditions and time. Um, Okay, so if um, uh, you are using Orchestra uh, to run the live coding for Trend Catcher, uh, you can start to launch right now. Um, and then we also provide two other optional uh, to, to download the Trend Catcher. One is Docker image. The other one you can just uh, install from our GitHub. And for today's uh, docu uh, document uh, documentation, like you can see, we uh, also put it on our GitHub and the uh, for uh, Bioconductor workshop. Let me, so if you go right here, uh, you're gonna see the details and all the uh, bigness right here. Okay. All right, okay. I'm gonna hand this to Xiang to introduce BayFam. So how? Uh, yeah, so for BFAM, we don't have live coding now, so we can just go to the GitHub to download the, the, the package and look at the full tutorial. But I will major, uh, explain the major functions of BFAM, and uh, yeah, you can have a sense of how to use it. Yes. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for attending this workshop, and it's my pleasure to share our package with uh, everyone here. So, um, Today, I would like to introduce our package, BFAM. So I think everyone has already know the single cell RNA sequencing um, technique and uh, the motivation of doing single cell RNA sequencing is trying to identify the cell heterogeneity. So the next question we're asking is, uh, what drive the cellular heterogeneity at the transcriptome level? So uh, as we all know that the transcriptome factors are the key regulator of gene expression. So if we can infer transcriptome factor activity in single cells, uh, we can kind of answer the first question. We can also use the inferred transcription factor activity to identify the cell heterogeneity, such as clustering cells, or assign the uh, pseudo time to each individual cell. So here we develop a built in uh, hierarchical model, BFAM, to infer transcription factor activities by integrating the gene expressions uh, with transcription factor chipset data. And BFAM can be used uh, to infer heterogeneity of uh, transcription factors between the cell types and uh, uh, or between the different conditions. Uh, I'll give a brief introduction about the BFAM framework. So first of all, we have uh, normalized the single cell RNA sequencing uh, gene expression cost table, and uh, the BFAM is a factor analysis model. So we will factorize this Y matrix into two matrix, W and Z. And, uh, and during this inference, we will also integrate with another uh, CHIP-seq prior knowledge. Uh, it's in this binary matrix. Uh, we, we will have uh, the relationship between the target genes and the transcription factors. So in this matrix, if the 
uh, if the gene is a potential target uh, of the transcription factor uh, by, from the TRIPSIC data, then this entry will be one, otherwise it will be zero. And from this binary matrix, we will assign different prior distribution on this uh, W matrix. So uh, then this, Sorry, these two matrix will have biological meaning. Uh, the W matrix will be the regulatory strands between transcription factor and target genes in this specific data, uh, single cell data set. And uh, the Z matrix will be the inferred transcription factor activities. And we can use the W and Z matrix to do further downstream analysis to identify the cell hydrogenity, for example, doing clusterings and uh, trajectory building. So then uh, next I will introduce the major functions in BFAM. So there are four major functions in the package. So the first one will be uh, BFAM preprocess. So in this function, we will use CIRA to normalize the single cell RNA sequence data and uh, filter the genes by the most variable expression and also to identify the uh, the most variable expressed transcription factors. So that is the, the uh, default setting for select the transcription factors. I will show you, uh, you can definitely add your, the transcription factor you are interested in. So I will show you how to do that later. And uh, the next function is BFAM. So this one is a main function of the package. So this one will infer the transcription factor activities from the single cell RNA-seq data based on the uh, CHIP-seq uh, chip prior, prior knowledge. And the, this, in this function, we are using VB function in uh, R stand. And uh, this function are using automatic differentiation variational inference method to, uh, to learn the uh, po a variational posterior, posterior uh, distribution parameters. And uh, the third function uh, for in BFM is uh, BFM activities. And this function is used to extract the infer transform factor activities from the outputs of the main function. And the last one will be BFAM weights, and uh, this function will extract the transcription factor and the gene weights uh, from the output of this main function. So now let's look at uh, some uh, the, the the structure of how to use BFAM with the data set, which is adult liver single cell RNA sequence data to show how we can use this. Uh, first of all, we will use a BFAM preprocess to uh, preprocess the data. So you can use, uh, so this URL data is a, a count, raw counts matrix. Uh, you can just part, uh, feed this uh, to the BFAM preprocess and then it will uh, generate the normalized matrix for you, normalize the counts matrix for you. And uh, then you can pass this normalized matrix into the BFAM main functions. And uh, here are multiple arguments in this main function. The first one will be your normalized matrix. The second one will be the species you are, uh, your single cell RNA-seq data is. So we only support human and the mouse in, uh, in this version. And also here is a way how you added uh, your interested transcription factors. So it will be a vector and you can uh, you pass a vector into this augment, and uh, each of the uh, element in this aug uh, aug vector will be your uh, transcription factor that you are interested in. Uh, and make sure that it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a gene name, it's a gene symbol of the transcription factors. And also uh, here is uh, how many cores you want to use. And this one uh, iter will be uh, your the number of iterations you want to learn in this. Uh, inference and the default setting is a thousand because we are using the automatic differentiation variational inference. So the key idea is they, they are using uh, the the sto stochastic uh, gradient descent to find the most optimized uh, variational uh, posterior parameters distribution parameters. So this one just the default setting. Uh, you can first try this default setting if you find. After a thousand iterations, it does, does not converge. You can always like increase this one, uh, but usually, based on our experience, experience this one is good enough. Uh, so the last two augment is the torrent relevant norm of the objective. So this one is a default setting uh, is point zero five uh, double 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 zero five, and uh, uh, we 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 think this default one is the target of the object you are learning. So this one is good enough if you can always play with it. Um, okay. So after you get the result from the BFAM main matrix, so you can extract the infer transcription factor activities. So you just use the call this function, uh, BFAM activities, and uh, then we'll give you the infer transcription factor activity. So uh, 
Then we can look at the heterogeneity of the inferred transform factor. So I did a TSNI on this with this inferred transform factor activity matrix. And uh, here is the uh, TSNI plot with the adult liver single cell RNA seq data, and different color is the uh, different cell types in the liver. And we could see that uh, the, the, the cells come from the same cell types are grouped uh, together. And uh, also, the next question will be. For every single uh, cell types, what are the highly activated uh, transcript factors? So here I'm using a random forest model to get that information. So the key idea is you labeled your cells uh, with the different transcript, uh, different cell types. Uh, you can this is a binary label. So for one uh, particular cell types, you just label one, and other cell types you by zero. And then you use the uh, feature importance in this random forest to identify which transform factor is the uh, most important transform factor to uh, to to predict or to classify the the cell types. So, but also you can use you can try different type of method to do this. For example, you do AOC based one, or you can do static testing to find the most uh, uh, highly activated transform factor in your dataset. But the final output will be something like this. So it will show you like in different cell types what are the marker transform factor or highly activated transform factor infer transform factors uh, from your dataset. So. Okay, here's a brief summary about BFAM. So first, we can infer transform factor activities based on single cell RNA-seq data and the CHIP-seq data. Uh, then we we learn the transform factor activity profiles accurately identify the cell heterogeneity. Uh, so the last function I didn't show here, but you can also always look at the uh, with the BFAM width matrix to extract the the, uh, the regulatory strength, infer regulatory strength between transform factor and its target genes. So yeah. Uh, we, our paper is published last year in genome research, and our uh, the the code is public available in our uh, uh, GitHub. And uh, there's I have another uh, comment here is we are uh, BFAM is under develop, uh, under improvement, so we have three different uh, direction. The one is like uh, besides the chip seq data, what else can we integrate into the single cell RNA sequencing data? Uh, so for example, we can have a single cell ATAC seq data or different type of uh, omics data. So I think how to integrate multi omics data into single cell RNA analysis, that will be one direction. The second one is we are using, uh, in this version, uh, we are just uh, use assigned the W matrix with different, with a, uh, di with a different prior knowledge. So that's a way how we integrate chip -seq knowledge into the analysis. But is there any other elegant way to do that? I think that that is one direction we are interested in. And the third one is um, the the key, the method to do the inference is uh, automatic differentiation, variational inference. And we are using uh, our stand to do that. But uh, currently, there are multiple other libraries, like uh, uh, TensorFlow Probability and PyTorch. Uh, I think we are really interested in to uh, connect the Bayesian hierarchical model with the uh, uh, deep learning package. So that will be the third direction we are working on. Um, yeah, so feel free to uh, raise an issue if you have any question about BFAM or you, you have any other things you want to discuss. You can. This is my uh, personal email. Yeah, thank you. All right, I know there was at least one online question um, for Shang now. Uh, so from Ryan Thompson wanted to know, does BitFam assume that the ChIP-seq data is static? Uh, if you had ChIP-seq data for each sample or each experimental condition, could it use that? Um, so currently we do, we do not support that. So the we are using the GTRD database, is, which is built in in the package, um, but I think uh, you can definitely change your uh, chipsec target, your prior information into this uh, BFAM framework. So you just uh, change your binary matrix. How to keyboard pull it out? Oh no. Yeah, like here. So if you, for example, if you have a, I don't think you have all the transform factor chipsec data, right? So you are in, you only have maybe in your lab only have one or two chipsec. 
uh, in particular transformer factors. So you can definitely change this binary matrix with your experiment data. Um, but I'm glad to help you to do that modification, but currently we don't support it uh, automatically. Yeah. Yeah, I was a similar question, I guess. I'm mm -hmm. wondering, uh, does the model only, it's only able to infer activity for those transcription factors that you have chip seek from GTRD? Right. If the chipsec data, if you, the chipsec data is not available, uh, we cannot do any inference on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Um, yeah. Let's move on to the second part. So, um, uh, for the gene catcher, um, the uh, a uh, potential biological application is pretty straightforward. So if you have a longitudinal uh, experimental design and you collect your time course uh, RNA-seq data, bulk, uh, both like bulk or single-cell RNA-seq data, you want to know which are the most dynamic genes through the time course. Um, and then another question is um, after you have this uh, gene-wise uh, dynamic information, uh, is there a very, uh, a very like unbiased way to visualize or extract the dynamic pathways, biological pathways through the time course? For example, uh, biological processes like disease progression or embryonic development. Okay, so uh, here I put a figure from our manuscript in JCI Insight uh, and basically give you a overview of the uh, framework of trend catcher. So for the user part, um, you just need to provide the um, count matrix. So for example, if you are using a bulk RSEq, uh, you just uh, provide us a count matrix. Each row is your gene and each column is a sample you collected at certain time point. And we encourage you to use equal or more than three replicates for each time point. Um, if you are doing single cell RNA-seq, um, so we encourage you to generate some pseudo-bulk uh, RNA library. So for example, you can do the integration and the cell type annotation beforehand. And then for each cell type you identified, you isolate these cell types and you can either use uh, average expression or uh, gene summation like for each single individual gene and then construct this pseudo bulk uh, count table. And you can feed this to the uh, trend catcher algorithm. So what you can get is, uh, of course, is a master table is gonna tell you uh, which one, uh, which genes, uh, genes are actually significantly dynamic through the time course and a set of uh, visualization functions. So one unique thing is very useful for the biologist. Uh, so instead of looking at the individual genes, you actually, uh, we generate this time heat map can tell you uh, which biological pathways, how the, uh, the biological pathway enrichment change or activated or deactivated through the time course. Um, and uh, I would like to spend like one or two minutes to go through the major steps for the algorithm because later on I want to show um, like where we, like the information you can use from the result. Um, so first step is we call it a baseline fluctuation um, confidence interval construction. Uh, basically, you need to tell trend catcher what is your baseline time, and we're gonna fit the uh, gene expression information into a negative binomial distribution. So, and then we can construct uh, the um, uh, estimated mean gene expression dispersion from for the baseline. And then for the non-baseline time point data, uh, we are applying a smooth ANOVA curve fitting algorithm. And then, so instead of looking at the replicates, now you have a fitted count for each time point for each single individual genes. And using all these estimated uh, gene expression through the time course, you can compare uh, for a non-baseline uh, gene expression data uh, compared to the baseline, how far it is actually go away from the baseline expression. And in this way, we can uh, do a hypothesis testing to assign a p-value for each time point. And then user Fisher uh, p-value combination method, we are able to assign a dynamic p-value for each single gene. 
And we also use, a, we call it a breakpoint screening strategy to assign the gene trajectories. So for each gene, we uh, give a trajectory types type. So later on, we use this information to construct the visualization functions. Um, so this is the overview for uh, trend catcher. And um, so if you look at the GitHub page uh, for today's workshop, there are four articles right there. Uh, I think it's like uh, was designed to purpose to answer certain questions, but uh, it will be a lot to present for the time concern. So we're gonna run through some most important uh, functions to show you uh, what is input, what is output, and how do you interpret this output. Okay, um, let, me, let me go to the orchestra. Okay. Okay, so after you launch the orchestra, um, you can click the Venice folder, and you're gonna see like the R markdown files for four different articles will be there. Uh, so the first one is the most important one. Let me see if I can make the font size bigger. Let's do 14. Okay, it's visible for the eye, for the audience. Okay. Uh, okay, let's library the, the, the package. This is like not working. Okay, um, I can just uh, run the button here. Okay. Uh, so to uh, um, demonstrate how it works, we provided some um, demo data. So if you look at the package folder, you're gonna find it in the um, this folder, the ext data folder. Um, so for the demo data, uh, it is actually a real biological experimental data. It, it was collected uh, uh, from the brain endothelial cells from the mouse after the LPS injury. So we measured um, at six different time points, like baseline, six hours, 24 hours, and so on. Um, you can load it. Uh, just provide where is the file is. And then, so yeah, here. So you can see it is a um, matrix, and the each row is a gene. Uh, so here is a gene sample ID and each column. Uh, so for the input data, we have some requir requirements for the uh, column data. Uh, so the name needs to be composed by three parts. So one is the project name. Um, you can just put any characters here. And the second um, is your time point. So it's like number uh, converting into the same unit. And the last one is your replicate ID. And it must start with the REP and just put number behind it. Okay, so the major function, the most important function from trunk catcher is this one. So run trunk catcher. Um, all you need to provide is your uh, count table, which uh, we encourage to use a CSV file. Um, and then uh, you can tell uh, trunk catcher what is your baseline time. So here is zero and your time unit. Um, this is not for analysis, but for the further visualization, uh, the figure title and so on. And we also do uh, gene, low count gene filtering. Uh, and uh, you can also run it on using multiple cores. And the last parameter here is the dynamic p-value threshold. So we strongly uh, suggest you just leave it as 0.05. Um, so these function, um, so I run it on my workstation and use 14 uh, calls. So normally this uh, just finish like in within two minutes. So it's pretty fast. But if you are using like single core uh, or like very few uh, cores, it could take uh, 10 to 15 minutes to finish. Uh, if you have like around 20,000 genes. Um, so so uh, for time limit, uh, I just want to demonstrate what is the output. So the output will, we call it a master list, and this is essential to do the further analysis and visualization. Uh, I also, so here I will not run this code, but you can run it after the workshop. Um, 
but the uh, output of the mask list, I put it in one of the demo data. Uh, you can just run uh, this code to load it. And then I want to show uh, what is the like the, the data structure like output. So if you look at the uh, master list right here, uh, names mask list, you're gonna see they, this is like a list that contains many elements. So the first um, four uh, or five, five um, elements are actually the basic information the user provided, of course, include your uh, count table. What I want to uh, demonstrate is the fitted count data and the master table. Okay, so we can just go head, just run head, uh, master list, and then you extract this fit, fitted count right here. Okay. So here you can see this is the after the smooth ANOVA curve fitting. So this is uh, after run train casual, this uh, for each gene, you're gonna have a fitted count from your replicates. And this takes the, the, the time sequential information inside to do curve fitting. And the mu and the DASP, the dispersion, this is the baseline um, mean expression and dispersion estimated by trend catcher. And T dot P dot V value. So this is the, uh, the hypothesis testing to for each time point to see how far it actually uh, the expression changed compared to the baseline. And of course, um, for each single gene, uh, we assign a uh, combined p-value. And then if you have like tens of thousand genes, you, do, you need to perform the p-value adjustment. So the last column, um, the p-value dot adj is your um, uh, statistical testing, like five, the, the p-value you're gonna use to decide if the gene is uh, significantly differentially expressed through the time course. And uh, the last element from this list um, is a master table. So uh, there are many columns, but uh, I want to show you uh, the trajectory pattern we assign for each gene. So basically, uh, it's just a string uh, tell you uh, for each gene, correspond to each row. And uh, for example, uh, the first gene, uh, the gene expression start to increase until 48 hours and start, start to going down until the end of the experiment. So this is the most important um, analysis for um, the trend catcher. And after you grab this uh, master list from the output, you can just do a lot of uh, further analysis and visualizations using this master list. Um, if you go to the second article, the gene trajectory analysis, so one thing um, is uh, if you are providing the, um, the gene uh, expression matrix using ensemble ID, it is impossible to, to, like, to know which gene it is. So one thing is we encourage you to add a symbol gene uh, column to your master table. How this do? Yes, uh, the type and the battery. I can use the other one. Yeah. Sorry. So while that waiting. So we provide some helper functions. So if you are providing a sample ID, um, you can just run this set of code. It will just automatically uh, convert the gene ensemble into a, uh, your gene symbol. So basically this chunk of code, what it does is at the end, as you can see, it added two new columns to your um, master table. So now if you plot figures, you know like which gene is actually uh, corresponding to. Uh, so and then if you look at the menu of trend catcher, you're gonna see a lot of functions for visualization and they all start with a draw. So it will draw something. So first function is uh, draw gene trajectories. So 
as you just put your master list in there and you put the gene on in sample names you want you want to plot um let me see Um, so the output is, uh, you can see your uh, fitted count data. For example, um, the black dots are actually your observed data, <clears throat> like from many uh, replicates, and the red dots is your, um, the, fitted, uh, the fitted count data from trend catcher. And then the gray horizontal line, actually the baseline fluctuation interval I mentioned before. Um, and you can, uh, also grab the uh, the p value for each dynamic p value for each gene and the trajectory patterns where it belongs and another important question when people um, assign your trajectories to gene uh, they want to know uh, the composition like which for example like as most of the genes actually follow a monotonic trend or is follow like a, a biphase trend and they want to know the timing of the activation or deactivation. So the function to run it is um, draw trajectory cluster grade. Uh, you just put your master list there. Um, and then I will. Is it working now? Uh, OK, great, thank you. Is it working? Uh, yeah, it's working, great. Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, one question is the, the clustering or the grouping of the gene trajectories. So for example, um, LPS injury will be a very um, like, um, like injury to your body. So we're expecting some uh, hyperinflammation genes which will activate in the early time. So as you can see, like 40, uh, 421 genes are actually following this biphase trend and then um, they Try, tend to activate in the very early time, six hours, 48 hours, 24 hours. So this is one of the visualization function. Uh, there are a set of visualizations that you can play with later on after this workshop. Um, so I will just go to the next time heat map, which is a unique feature from um, Trend Catcher. Uh, so the, to generate time heat map, um, right here, so you, just need to um, call this draw time heat map go function. Okay, thank you. Um, we also provide, so below, except the go enrichment analysis, we also integrate the enrich R. So um, you can do either way. So here I give an example. You can just put your master list there and you tell trend catcher um, which uh, you're, you're running like using a uh, human or the mouse and then the go in a set of other parameters to run go enrichment. Uh, so uh, I suggest to only plot like top 10 uh, go functions right there. Um, so it's gonna grab the top 10 upregulated and downregulated genes through the for, for the time heat map. So this function is gonna, if you run this chunk of function, it's gonna take several minutes to run. Um, but I, uh, to show what is the output, um, I put the time heat map a list object also in the R package demo data. Um, this is a pretty large object. Okay. But it, as you can see, it contains three elements. So first, of course, is your uh, figure. You can just print it out. And you're gonna see so this is an unbiased way to actually tell you which biological pathways are actually dynamic through the time course. Um, and as you see, like there are a lot of goal terms actually redundant. Uh, for example, the extracellular, extracellular structure matrix organization. So there are three terms actually the same. So to do that, um, we provide another function. Uh, you can just select part uh, of that so you just call this let go, um, and it will just remove, you can just manually remove the redundant term and just plot, this is for your uh, publication. Uh, so the last function 
uh, not the last function for this article, uh, it will be very useful for the biologists. So we know biologic pathways and they want to know like which genes are actually um, they should pay attention to. Um, so you can call this draw go heat map function uh, and you tell them which is the time window you're interested in. And uh, it will show the um, kind of heat map to show uh, the gene expression uh, level heat map. So this is gonna take a few seconds to run. We're still going. Okay. So, so this for zero to six hours, this set of genes coming from the, your um, selected interest pathways, and then there's a corresponding log flow change. Um, and then you can pick, uh, so you can narrow it down to a set of genes like you can use for the further analysis. And uh, the last part, the, the, the last article is, um, so for example, you have more than one group and you're doing um, longitudinal experiment setting for two different biological conditions. Uh, so here we use the uh, example from um, uh, our paper. So for example, you have a severe COVID-19 patients group and uh, moderate COVID-19 uh, group. And then you have, you, so you run trunk catcher twice and you have two master list. And you also run time heat map, you have two uh, time heat map object. And you want to, and then you realize one of the biological functions was uniquely showing in one of the analysis. And you want to compare, um, is actually a significant difference between the two temporal um, groups. Uh, and of course, if you, you are using single cell for each cell type, you're running trend catcher and you can compare two different cell types. So here we, um, so the way to do it, uh, we provide a permutation test um, together with the visualization. Just the call uh, curve compare permutation puts your two master list there. Uh, and then for example, the neutrophil activation we see in the severe group, but uh, we wonder is actually, it's gonna separate the uh, biological groups. And uh, this is a super fast to run. And after that, what you can get is a Lloyd's curve uh, fitting for the two different groups for the neutrophil activation genes. And the gray area indicates after the permutation test, these two groups are started to separate significantly around like the second week after the symptom onset. So this is uh, the last article. Um, so I think if you go through the four uh, vagueness articles, you can uh, do a pretty thorough analysis for your time course, um, the RAC data. And for the further documentation and uh, like details, you can go to our uh, GitHub page. And uh, if you are trend using Trend Catcher, please cite our article uh, was published in February, uh, GCI Inside. Um, yeah, at the end, I, oh, sorry. At the end, I like to, um, sorry, okay to thank uh, the members of our lab, especially our professor, uh, Julius Raymond, and then uh, Shang Gao right here, and our collaborators. Uh, and thank you very much. I'd like to take questions. Any questions to the audience? Thanks for the talk, and uh, especially I have a question about trans catcher, a uh, trend catcher. So you compare the two uh, groups, different yeah. severe and versus moderate, and then how did you compare? I mean, the, you are kind of conducting a state testing. So did you co conduct a testing at each time point separately? Um. So uh. So. For time course, you have like, um, for example, for the same gene, yeah. 
um, and you have expression trajectory from two different groups, right? Yeah. And the permutation test is to shuffle the label of the gene expression, like, and then the, you do the uh, curve fitting, and then what we do is calculate the area difference. So in this way, um, if you run 1,000 times, you're gonna have like kind of empirical distribution of the shuffling data, and you can test to do the hypothesis testing. So the testing is going to be uh, for each gene one by one? Um, yeah, that's a very good question, yes. Uh, so, so here, um, if you, oh, it's not here. So uh, we do the log curve fading, for example, uh, neutral field activation, we find 117 genes. And then we do a, like, a curve fitting for each group using the neutral field genes, activation genes. And then you compare those two curves. So not like 117 gene trajectory curves. You are doing that. But I guess there are more uh, like, uh, like ways to do it. But uh, so far, this is the package support. Yeah, thank you. And the other question is, you showed the trajectory clusters, so the, the bunch of genes are falling into these kind of the patterns. And yeah, yeah. How did you group them? Oh, that that's we didn't uh, apply any machine learning. So we assigned the gene gene trajectory pattern from after we run the trunk catcher, right? And you have just a, a descriptive term for that gene. Um, no. Because uh, because trunk catcher algorithm already consider a temporal thing, um, and then yeah, there I mean you, you can just uh, use a clustering for a time course. There are several methods, but uh, the smooth ANOVA actually takes the text the sequential information inside. So I think the estimation is enough, and then we just uh, use the break point to assign gene trajectories, and then just group them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the talk. I have a question for Chen. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Did you try to use this for ataxic data? I assume you could treat the, the peaks, like yes, time series, um, right, as genes. This is a very good question. So that's actually, we uh, would like to extend the package to uh, like uh, time course ataxic data. And we're also uh, collaborating with some other labs to help to generate data and analysis. So uh, yeah, I'm also looking forward to extending extend the package for that. Yeah, follow up on this question. So I assume you could also run both ataxic and RNA-seq together in your clustering, right? And you can see, uh, not the clustering, but then the, the time series, then you can see which genes and which peaks they go together. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Um, um, yeah, you can run separately, uh, but uh, the further interpretation, if you want to find like which happens fast, uh, for, like at first, could cause a later event. Uh, that would be, um, yeah, so the, the causality, we need to think more carefully about that. But uh, yeah, if uh, for ataxic data and RNC data, I think you know, if we extend the R package later, uh, you could run both. And then the further um, interpretation, we still need to think carefully about that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. happen first before your gene expression, right? So uh, is there any way to infer the causal relationship between the openness of the chromatin and the expression of the, uh, of the genes on a time course manner? I think that will be a very interesting question. Right, so I think the question is whether this delay is because of association or is there a causal relationship between that? I think um, yeah, I think that's a very interesting question. Okay, there's a couple of online questions um, from Wes Wilson. Uh, how does the smoothing spline ANOVA model of Trendcatcher compare to the other popular BioC time course packages like EBSeq, HMM, that use hidden Markov model, or uh, MASIG Pro, that's a NB plus PR or spline TC, spline regression? Um, yeah, so um, we tried several curve fitting methods uh, out there. Um, like, I don't think it's from Bioconductor, but some general uh, curve fitting methods. 
Um, so the because, uh, for example, the it really depends on the biological question. For example, if we, we are more curious about the injury, which actually going to cause the sharp increase or decrease from your gene at a very short time. So, um, so far, the smooth ANOVA, which is kind of a pretty good trade-off between the smoothness and the, uh, the fitness. So we realized that for a sharp, especially for like a, a log flow change, like la large log flow change happening in a very short time is actually pretty good performance compared to the other general curve fitting methods. Yeah. The next question is, does Trendcratcher require that all subjects to have the same set of common time points? Can it handle cases where subject A has samples on day one and three, but subject B has samples on day two and four? Uh, could you repeat the question? Does it require all subjects to have the same time points or all treatments to have the same time points? Um, yes, I think so far, yes, because uh, the requirement for uh, the, the input count table is really need to be the same point for the multiple replicates, biolo biological replicates. Okay. okay. And then also Wes followed up on that for Ryan's question, says that was going to be his next question. Uh, that other spline approaches I have tended to need that, so I was curious. That's why I used EBC HMM over spline TC in the past. Uh, yeah, we for the simulated data set, we actually compare with the D62, uh, D62 uh, spline curve fitting. Uh, we uh, perform slightly better than them, uh, but the advantage of using trunk catcher is for longer time course series when the uh, trajectory pattern were more complicated. For example, moi to model, we actually uh, performs better. Um, but for uh, like for, like short time or limited uh, like small time uh, number of time points, uh, the performance is very similar actually. Okay, we're out of time. Let's uh, thank, thank you, Inga and John again for a nice talk.